Hi, welcome to Yoga with Lynn and Leo. This is 19 days of yoga, day 8. So we're starting again in Adam Mukhaswanasana, dog head down. You will need your support for your halasana, that's a platform. We've discussed this in previous days, but you can have a look in the description if you're not quite sure. In addition, if you're doing the modified actions, as Leo is showing in the coloured top, you will need a chair, a bolster, two foam pads and two bricks. Lynn in the white is doing the classic versions of the poses, so only requires the platform. So either from a prone position or from on full, all fours, coming to dog head down, Adha Mukha Svanasana. Pressing down into the palms of the hands and back with the legs. Now bend your knees slightly to get this backward motion of the tops of the thighs. So we're extending back at the root of the thighs, opening out in the backs of the knees. Keep the height in the pose, so keep the sitting bones lifted towards the ceiling as you get this action of movement back with the legs. Make sure that the heels are not swinging in. Look forwards and then step or jump the feet towards your hands. You can see that Leo in the coloured top is taking the feet wider. This is helpful if you have difficulties in your hamstrings, maybe a little bit of tightness, as most of us do for the first few years when we're practicing yoga. Those who are a little more experienced can come into the full action of Uttanasana, taking the hands by the sides of the feet and letting the torso release down the thighs. So we're going to come back into dog pose again, place the hands to the floor and step or jump the feet back into Adha Mukha Svanasana. So press into your hands and extend. Bend your knees again slightly. So with this action we're going to really get the movement of the thigh bones away from the torso. So press the thigh bones away, keeping the lift, keeping the height in the pose. Don't be too anxious to take the heels down if you're not at that stage yet. Look forwards and step or jump the feet back into Uttanasana. And again you can either take the feet wide or have the feet together. If you take the feet wide make sure that the toes are pointing directly forwards so that you're not letting the toes turn out. Again, if you're working in the modified action, draw the shoulder blades down and extend the collarbones forwards. Those working in the full action, place the hands by the sides of the feet and really lift up through the legs. It's very important in Uttanasana you keep the lift through the legs. Keep the kneecaps lifting, the thigh muscles lifting. So now look forwards and slowly coming up out of the action. Stand in Tadasana. Roll the shoulders back and down. Lift through the chest. Keep the inner edges of the feet together. Roll the shoulders back and down. Now we're going to come into the centre of the mat. If you're working in the modified actions, take a couple of foam pads and place them to each side of your mat. Roll your shoulders back and down. Lift through the chest. We're coming into Virabhadrasana 1, Warrior 1 pose. Bring the hands to the centre and step or jump the feet wide. Lift through the chest, roll the shoulders back and down. Now turn the arms at the roots so that the palms face the ceiling and extend the arms up by the ears. Turn your back foot in well and turn the whole of your right leg and foot out completely and turn the pelvis so that it faces towards the narrow end of the mat. Those working in the modified action can take that back heel up onto a foam pad. Keep extending into your fingertips, lifting out the pelvis as you bend your front leg. If there's any discomfort in your back, place your hands onto your hips, lean a little further forwards. Uh, you can find a tutorial on this pose in our yoga pose directory if this is a difficult action for you. So pressing back into the back leg heel, lifting out the pelvis and extending into the fingertips. Come up, turn the feet to face forwards, and we're going to go to the other side now. 
that back foot has to turn in well otherwise the pelvis cannot turn so turn the back foot in well having the heel up onto a foam pad helps with this rotation of the pelvis so keep the lift through the front of the body as you bend that front leg we're working towards a square on that front leg stretch into your fingertips lock the elbows and extend back into your back leg heel even if it's lifted keep the back leg strong and straight don't let it sag lengthen the tailbone towards the floor come up out of the pose bring the feet forwards and step or jump the feet back into Tadasana mountain pose inner edges of the feet together chest lifting fingertips stretching down keep the breath fine and even through the nostrils and the weight moving back into the heels we're going to come now into the next action so bring the hands to the center step or jump the feet wide Keep the chest lifted, the arms extended to start with, and now we're taking the hands onto the hips. You may need to have a couple of bricks in front of you for your Prasarita Padottanasana. Either take the hands to the floor underneath your shoulders or place them onto bricks. Or if you're doing classic versions of the versions of the poses, then see how Lynn is taking the hands back so the heel of the hand lines up with the heel of the foot the elbows come in line with the shoulders and the head releases down to the floor it might be that you have to put a few foam pads underneath the head at this stage the important actions are to keep the outer edges of the feet pressing down and the legs lifting so we're coming out of the poses now bring the hands so that they're underneath the shoulders lift up either heel toe the feet together or step and jump the feet back into the centre and stand in Tadasana. Take the weight back into the heels, lift strongly through the fronts of the legs, all four corners of the kneecaps lifting, lift out of the pelvis and lengthen the tailbone towards the floor. So keep the abdomen moving back. We're going to come into the next action now which is a wide-legged version of Malasana, garland pose. So you can either work with a couple of bricks and you can see that Leo is going to use her platform here to take her heels up onto. Lynn is just sitting back on the heels. So when we come into this action, you can be on your hands and knees, tuck your toes under, have the feet hip width apart and roll back so that you're in a squatting position. But the bottom shouldn't be touching either your support or the floor. For many people, this action is quite difficult to access when they begin in yoga. So if the heels lift, have some kind of support underneath them, a foam pad or your platform as Leo is showing here. Leo has her hands onto bricks and the extension is a forward extension with the arms and the chest with the inner knees gripping hold of the outer ribs. But the groins move back, the abdomen moves back towards the spine. Keep the breath fine and even through the nostrils and press down into your heels. So come back onto your hands and knees and we're coming into the next action now. Sit in Dandasana, staff or stick pose. Lynn is using no supports underneath the sitting bones but you might need to have a bolster or maybe even a higher support under. Roll the shoulders back and down, lift through the chest. We're coming into a Bharavajasana twist. So you swing your legs to the left. 
extend the left arm up by the left ear and take that left hand to the outside of the right thigh. The right hand comes behind you. If you're sitting on the bolster, you can use that right hand onto the bolster to give you the rotation to rotate from the base of the spine. Let the shoulders release down. Extend the crown of the head towards the ceiling. Move the abdomen back towards the spine and keep the left groin moving down. If you need more height for this, then please do take a foam pad or whatever else you need to lift you up a little. Again, we have a tutorial for this pose in our yoga pose directory if you're not familiar with it. So keep the chest lifting, the breath smooth and even through the nasal passages and rotate that right shoulder back. You can see the action of the feet here. Stretch the legs out in front of you and we're going to take the feet now to the right. Hopefully you were able to see the action of the feet when you were doing them to the left because now the feet will not be as visible. So again, lift up with the right hand extend lengthen that right side waist and take that right hand to the outside of your left thigh take the left hand behind you either onto the floor or onto your bolster to help you with that rotational action in the spine so keeping the right groin moving down towards the floor don't drag that up with you as you twist Use the hands to get the rotation, but avoid creating tension in the neck. Release, stretch the legs forwards. Come into Dandasana, star or stick pose again, lifting through the chest and extending the legs strong and straight ahead of you. So we're going to come into Halasana, plow pose now. You can see that Leo is going to be moving her support. She has a chair to take the feet to. For ease of filming we have wrapped our supports up in advance. Under normal circumstances you would just be setting up your platform and flipping your mat over it which would mean that the back of the head was on to the floor as Leo is showing here rather than onto the mat as Lynn is showing. This means that the back of the neck is free. We wouldn't recommend that you have the back of the head onto the mat unless there's a specific reason for doing that. When you're ready, roll yourselves into your Halasana plow pose. Leo is using a bolster for her launch pad. Lynn has a foam pad for the launch pad. Take the toes either to the seat of the chair or to the floor. Whichever you're using you need to hit your thighs away from your face. The hands are into the back supporting the ribs. So use those hands to move your back ribs in, lift your side ribs up. Keep the back of the neck soft and long the gaze of the eyes into the chest. There should be no pressure in the head and no discomfort in your body when you're in this action. Move the elbows in towards one another and keep the breath fine and even through the nostrils. Keep the facial features passive but the legs are working strongly, so be right on the nerve endings of your toes, hitting the thighs away from your face. Keep the legs very active. Don't let the, the legs sag at the knees. Press down into your elbows.
and keep working your hands up your back. We're coming out of the poses now, so bring the knees into the chest and roll yourselves down. You can put your launch pad underneath your head and just wriggle down slightly so that the pelvis is onto the floor. Just so that there's a slight differential between the level of your torso and the level of your pelvis. You want your torso and head to be slightly higher. Keep the knees bent so that your back is resting. Let the abdomen be soft. Allow the eyes to close and just rest for a moment. Roll to your right side now to come out of the action. Move your platform out of the way. We're going to come into Supta Baddha Supine Bound Angle Pose. So as in the previous days, you'll see that Lynn is going to hold on to the ankles. Leo is going to use her bolster just with the mat flipped over on it. So if this is a difficult action for you to get by holding the ankles, if it's strained or forced in any way, then do the modified action. You don't need to have a bolster. You can always put the soles of the feet onto a couple of foam pads or even a blanket with the, with the mat rolled around that. So if you're working in the classic action, keep a hold of the fronts of the ankles. This will help to roll the shoulders back and down. There should be no discomfort in the back, no strain in the body. Allow the eyes to close. If you're working in the modified action, keeping the soles of the feet together, move your torso as close as you can to your bolster. Take your arms out at a 45 degree angle from the body with the palms facing the ceiling. Let the breath flow. Fine inhalation, fine exhalation through the nostrils. Keep the back of the neck long, the facial features soft, the breath fine and even. So we're going to come out of the pose now, bring the knees together, release the ankles if you're holding them. If you're working in the classic poses, then you can just have your legs bent and stretch out to Shavasana, relaxation, corpse pose. If you're working in the modified actions, then you may need to have the bolster underneath your knees. Stretch out the legs and let the feet and ankles release. You need to be comfortable in this pose, Shavasana. Leo is showing here without a blanket underneath the head, but if you find that the head tips back a little in this action, then do use a blanket. The chin should be below the forehead when you're working in any of the supine actions. Again, have the palms facing the ceiling, the fingertips curling in towards the palms, the arms at a 45 degree angle from the body. Let the muscles in the legs and the feet release. Let the abdomen be soft. Relax your throat and release the facial features. Let the gaze of the eyes fall into the center of the body and just release the body to the floor. We're coming out of the poses now. You can stay in for longer if you choose to do so in your Shavasana when we're doing these sequences. So bend your knees, place your fingertips onto your ribs, 
carefully roll to your right side. Don't be in too much of a rush to come up, but then gently bring yourselves into a seated position. You can use your bolster to sit on or sit on the floor in Sukhasana, simple cross legs. Thank you for joining us today. Namaste.